Hi everyone, Liz here. Thanks for stopping by. So, I've finished my bulldog. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably have seen that I've done my bulldog. Um, I did post a picture of him and I did say that we will be having a day kitten. And yeah, it will be quite a quick one because unfortunately... <laughs> There are no DMC coats on this one, oh, which is really, really sad. But anyway, um, I thought I would just quickly pop on and show you him. Uh, yeah, so this was from the Bismack Bear Store. I'll put the late details down below again. Um, I did say when I got this that I was going to bling him up. And when I got round to doing it, some of the colours are just a little bit off and without having the DMC codes as well, that made it a little bit difficult. Yeah, the main problem I had the colour with when I started doing it was number one. And number one is pink. And I thought, oh dear, we're going to have a pink bulldog. And I didn't want a pink bulldog. I'm not quite sure how that happens, whether it's the calibration on the machines or what, but I have had it happen before. Um, I did a, a scene of animals and there was like a garden fence that was like a white picket fence and a white bench that was sat on. And for whatever reason, it was done in this pink colour and it's a case of changing it out. Um, I believe it could be Diamond Painting Gamer has actually bought this one as well um sorry if i've got the wrong person i know i did see a, an unboxing of it uh and i just thought i wonder if you've got the same problem with the color as i have but what i've done is swap it out for my 3865 spares so that's another good reason to keep uh spare drills because the colors aren't always right i'll show you this look you can see that this here is a very i think it just about yeah this is a very very pale pink and next to these pale pinks where i've got my 3865 my creamy color it would have been that color can you imagine having a pink bulldog um i think i've also got a leopard picture as well that's pretty similar where the colors are just off um because we already had the white on the Union Jack vest, I didn't want to have the bright white because I thought that would be too much. Plus as well, we do have like the um, lilac-y, purpley tones and the beige tones on the face, which again, I thought if I'd have put a bright white with it, it just wouldn't have blended in. And to be fair, not many dogs are actually completely white. Uh, we used to have a little West Highland white terrier. That was very rarely white. He was various shades from green off the grass to green from cow pats to whatever mud or whatever muck he could get into. So, yeah. So, I just thought, yeah, I'll do him a bit creamy. As I say, I was going to do the vest sparkly and I did start putting some um, of the red on and it just didn't match the style of the painting. I think this looks more, to be honest, like a cross stitch um, and the sparkle just didn't blend in with the picture. I'm still not wholly comfortable with this leg being the fawny and the brownie colour. I may take those fawns out or take some of them out and put some of my 3865. I know it's the back leg and I know it's the shading, but it just jars a little bit with me. Um, this is the thing, once you've been diamond painting for a while or once um, you get a little bit more confident, you do start picking things out. I did look at the crown as well and I did start putting gold uh, various shades of gold jewels on this but again without replacing all the colours on the crown and recharting it all I just got to a point where I thought it's just not really worth the work that it's going to take to put in to do that crown to make it look anything to stand out so you know I, I'm sorry if anybody's disappointed that I've not done it in the crystals as I intended because I really did want to do crystals on him but it, it, it's just not that kind of picture. It just didn't sit right. It didn't look right. Um, I remember I did a, a cat um, for, I think it was the first drills and chills I did. Um, and there was a moon in the background. And I did that in all crystals. And when I did it, it just didn't look right with the other drills. Somehow it just didn't blend in. Um, and 
I think you either need to do it all crystal um, on the crown. Oh, I mean, an odd one's okay, you know, for sparkle or even ABs maybe. Maybe I might change some of them out for ABs. I don't know, but this painting actually is only going to be up for my Jubilee celebration corner that I'm uh, doing. So possibly it's not worth uh, to spending my time doing that. I'm not sure. If I do do any more changes to it, I will let you know. But yeah, I mean, that's the actual picture of the bulldog. Um, I can see really that there's no pink, you know, and the crown certainly looks a lot more solid colours. Um than the amount of colours that it's in. Possibly if it was bigger, on uh, the crown would have been easier to do. But as it is, it just it's too much work just for the, what I want it for. So. But he is very, very cute and I don't like him. Um, and I do like that we've got our highlights in the eyes, which is really, really good. And uh, I better say sorry to Diamond Painting Claire, who I always call Claire's Diamond Paints, because I always give her a shout out and say the wrong title on her channel. So sorry, Claire, but I know she always <laughs> puts um, ABs, which is a really good idea just to give more sparkle to the eyes or again, puts a crystal. Um, I may change those out for ABs because it is a good idea. So thank you. Diamond Painting Claire. It's Diamond Painting underscore Claire. And uh, the Claire is C-L-A-R-E. <laughs> At least I can spell her name right. Oh, dear. Uh, I'll put her details down below. I will try and remember. It's one thing that I forget to do. And if I do forget to put any links on my videos, please just give me a kick or a shout or whatever and say, Oh, Liz, you, you meant to do that and you haven't done it. And I will try and get it up there. So, yeah. But I love him. I mean, he's. I'm pleased I've done him. And I have had him a long time. Um, the 11th of February 2021, I actually bought this painting. So that was the start of my uh, YouTube journey. Um, I think I'd started in the December before that. So yeah, he was uh, quite an early on one and I am trying to get some of my early on ones done. Try saying that, it's quite difficult. <laughs> but he is lovely, so he will be going up on my display and you will get to see him. Um, as I say, they're my spares that I uh, had. So I'm pleased that I'd kept spares. If I hadn't, I would have had a pink bulldog. And it's not even a subtle pink, it's a very, very bright pink. You know, it, it's just too much. Um, so, yeah, right. What I'm going to do is put these into little baggies like these um, and just put them out of the way. Uh, as I say, I tend to donate them to charity, get some bags out of my box. As you can see, I have a lot of uh, bags and different things. I try and keep them all. And it says bags just in case I forget what they are. <laughs> Oh dear, right, let's go grab a tray. I'd lost my big tray then. Oh no! <laughs> so we'll leave him there smiling. Well, he's not smiling, is he? He looks quite sad. And he's got like a little beauty spot. So even though he's got a sad face, he's very beautiful. Really gorgeous. Okay, so let's just get these into bags. I'm not going to label them either. I'll just get rid of the labels. Um, the background, the pale uh, aqua bluey colour. I did have three bottles of that if you remember when I kitted it up and they have been used. Two of the bottles have been used. What I actually did, which I tend to do on smaller paintings, 30 by 30, 30 by 40, is do all of the edging first um, and get that out the way and it sort of lines up the rest of the painting as well which is good. Uh, it's just the way I do it. I, I have in the past just done it section at a time but I tend to find that I like to do the outside edge and then I just spend time and I just do sections of the little bits. Um, I think actually I did his vest as a whole bit and then I left his face till last because he was just so cute. <laughs> a lot of uh, different colours and colour changes on that crown up there. The, that was a lot uh, of different things to do, particularly around here. I suppose I could get... Um, even one large gem, you know, special gem and put it there. I don't know. I might see what it looks like. I'm thinking all the time on this because, yeah, I really wanted to do a bit more with it, but the pink threw me off. Anyway, let's get that pink kitted up and out of the way. Kitted up, put away. So, yeah, I've got a lot of this colour now, which is a shame there's no DMC cord. 
but never mind. Um, I've noticed some of the, I think this was from Amazon. And I have noticed a lot of the Amazon companies now are actually um, catching on and putting DMC codes on. Because they know we're crafters. We don't like to throw things away. And these are all little plastic beads and we don't want them to be chucked away. So that's the first one. Put that away. So I hope everybody is having a, a good week and had a good weekend and that life is treating you well. And let me just pull him down a little bit. There he is. And uh, that if you have any health issues or family issues, that it's uh, going quite, uh, that it's going well. Want everybody to have a smile. Uh, we uh, had a lovely weekend. So I had my friend to stay over, which was lovely. Uh, Millie loves her. She's um, actually like an animal magnet. Um, I don't know whether you would call it animal magnetism, <laughs> but I actually mean animals. Uh, wherever you go, animals, particularly dogs, will just flock to her. She's just such a lovely person. I think that it shines out of her. And, uh, oh, it's getting very dark in here. I think we're maybe in for a storm. I'll see how we go and I may have to put the light on. Um, if it's suddenly like a cat in a coal mine, let me know. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, she, yeah, even we went to, um, oh, gosh, where did we go? We went to a shop, oh, gosh, a long time ago when we used to go on holiday together uh, in Brighton. And uh, it was a dog shop. It sold all different dog clothes and collars and I just always have to go in these shops I know that um well Maisie at the time that we had our little Scotty dog she didn't mind wearing clothes and things but Millie won't wear anything but we just like to go in these places and have a look you know um and uh, we went in there and like the shop was packed and there was this little Boston Terrier that uh, belonged to the shop owner that was roaming around and as soon as my friend walked in the door he ran straight up to her with his ball you know that's how uh, much animals like her a whole shop of people could have chosen anybody but as soon as she walked through the door he just got out of his basket and brought her the ball to play with so yeah Millie absolutely loves her Maisie absolutely loved her that was our previous Scotty and our other dogs that we had as well um, they used to go and stay with her if we went uh, abroad on holiday. She used to look after them for us. And uh, yeah, I don't think they ever wanted to come home, to be fair. <laughs> so we went to uh, the Bridlington Kite Festival. Um, Bridlington is a little seaside town, which is on the east coast of the UK, about the middle. We're in about the middle of the uh, east coast as you follow around as you come down um on the east coast there's like um a bit that sticks out and goes like that and then comes out and goes like that well we're sort of on that bit that goes round like that <laughs> and bridlington's just a bit further up you can google it and have a look um hubby's actually from there he grew up there um so yeah he he well, we used to go on holidays there. When I was a child, we used to go on holidays to the place where uh, Hubby actually lived, which is quite a strange thought, you know, that you might have passed them um, in a, a previous time and not known that, oh, I'm going to marry you soon. <laughs> well, no, I was a baby in a pram in those days. Uh, yeah, we used to stay in a, a guest house or a bed and breakfast or whatever you call them these days with a landlady and uh, go and play on the beach. So, yeah. But yeah, the kite festival was marvellous. Um, we stood and watched quite a few of the kites get launched. I have done some videos of some. So what I'll do is put them at the end of this video. So if you do want to watch, then uh, you're quite welcome to do so. Um, it was a very nice day. It was very windy because obviously they were doing it on the cliff top. Um, overlooking the sea and the cliffs in the distance and everything and then the town in the distance the other way and uh, yeah it, it, I say, it was very very windy so for kite flying it was wonderful and it was great because there was lots of children there and uh, they brought their little kites as well so yeah but these are big kites these are big professional kites that have cost an awful lot of money um, and the one that I've videoed that I will put at the end of this video is actually uh, it's 300 foot long and it's all in like little discs it's like a Chinese lantern version of a kite 
and it just all unfurled and it took well we counted 13 but the guy on the microphone said 11 people to hold it and then they just gradually let it up one by one now these kites do go really high in the air because obviously 300 foot is very high and uh, they have to have special permission to do that because um with aviation things and everything uh, they have to have special permission but yeah it was great fun really really enjoyed seeing it uh hubby was okay in his electric wheelchair off-roading over the grassy ground um and millie just loved it because there was loads of dogs there she absolutely you know every dog that she saw and every child that she saw she loves kids she just gravitates towards kids all the time children all the time and wants to go and play whatever they're doing so yeah she got lots of cuddles and hugs and strokes and things so she was in her element um i liked the crocodile best there was a great big kite it was more like a balloon type kite like a big blow up animal um and that was uh, a crocodile so that was quite good to see and apparently there was the biggest teddy in the world um, this great big teddy but we didn't really get a good shot of him because he'd already been shown earlier on they were like putting them up at different um times during the day and then leaving them to fly but we did see all like the lizards which i've got some really good footage of just flying around and there was pandas and there was a couple of polar bears as well actually which were quite bizarre um, and then some fish and yeah it, it really was fascinating it was great to see and they had a really good turnout as well there was lots of little food stalls so I'm hoping that they all got plenty of business you know because we've uh, had a couple of tough years for poor little businesses small businesses so you know there was queues and queues and queues so you know I'm hoping that uh, they got plenty of business to try and catch up and get themselves back up and running again so that they can make a living because at the end of the day that's all we really want to do and uh, yes yeah, so it was good fun and uh, then we went to Sewerby Hall and uh, just had a snack a sandwich at Sewerby Hall which is like um, an old stately home there's a lot about Amy Johnson she was the uh, first lady to fly i think from england to australia uh, i'll probably get shot now for being from hull because amy johnson is from hull uh, and not knowing the full history of it <laughs> i do but i just forget these things you know i think as you get older you know um information comes in one end and something has to drop out the other you can't remember everything <laughs> well that's my excuse and i'm sticking to it so yeah that was good uh, but the funniest thing well the funniest thing that i thought that happened was that uh, millie met a basset hound now if you don't know basset hounds they're the ones that are like they're like a really big dog so they have a really big head and then they've got a really long body and tail and then they just have little legs so millie came face to face with this big dog and she just had this confused expression and like the dog's looking at her there and she's just sort of like sat down and thought, I'm looking at this big dog in the eye, what's going on? And she did actually look to one side of it and look to the other side of it. And it was like she was looking to see, well, where's his legs? <laughs> because she's so used to having to look up to big dogs and uh, yeah she, she just stood there and then she just sat down and just looked at him and was just looking around him well the owner was laughing and i was laughing sadly i i, I was i didn't have my camera uh well my phone my camera out to take the pictures i wish i had because it was just so funny her expression i said oh she's never met a basset hound before i think she's trying to work out why she's nose to nose with this basset hound <laughs> oh but she was absolutely gorgeous her uh, marking she was um a white and lemon one which is like the fawny color the light fawny color and she was just absolutely oh she was just beautiful and she was just looking at millie as if to say well what's up with you you know hello are you okay and she got a bit of a tail wag and then off they plodded but her paws were enormous she really did have big paws 
so yeah they are quite funny looking dogs well a lot of dogs are funny looking aren't they but yeah if you're wanting a, a big dog that's only got little legs then yeah but oh, she was beautiful and off she toddled and Millie just kept looking back as we're walking away but yeah as she came face to face with her it's just the way she looked and then she sat down and just started looking at either side as if to say something strange here I've not seen you before <laughs> Dear, don't you just love dogs ah, that was funny so that was our weekend I say we had a nice lunch sat out in the garden and just had a bit of a relax and then we had a nice slow drive home um and I think what did we do any gardening no we've done a bit of gardening this weekend um, oh, we've bought a couple of bird boxes. I know it's really a bit late for this year, but they do sometimes have like a second round, don't they? As it were, the birds and that might be having some more babies. So we've had to find somewhere to put them in the garden so the cats can't get them. Uh, fortunately, next door's tree is quite um, thick and hangs just over the top of our fence. Um, so we've decided to put it there because the, the, say the branches are quite thick together so a cat's not be, going to be able to get through it to get to the bird boxes because we don't want the babies being got by a little pussy cat and I, you know I know it's nature isn't it cats chase things cats go after birds dogs go after cats you know it's just the way things are but if we can do something to stop it from uh, happening easily then that's what we do right well that's my last letter on this one i've not had to put the light on so hopefully the video is not too dark that's all nice and ready now for me to put two stickers on this one one's off the bag and one's um from my case yeah this is all nice and ready now for me to get the touch about my wall which i want to do get all my display done so i've just got two more flags to do and then a couple of little tweaks on different things but yeah so that is my british bulldog with his crown on all ready for the queen's jubilee okay well i hope you've enjoyed looking at this with me and my little chat if you have a thumbs up so always much appreciated and if you've got any comments or questions leave them in the comments down below have you ever been to a kite festival and seen lots of kites? It was really good fun. And I say stay tuned to see it at the end. I'll edit it down a bit so it's not quite so long. Uh, and if you want to come back and see what I get up to next, then if you press the subscribe button, oops, over in this corner, and then a little old notifications bell pops up. It just means you'll get a notification saying, oh, Liz has updated a new video. Hello. <laughs> And I say it costs nothing to subscribe and I would lo love you to come along and subscribe with me. I have got lots of new subscribers at the minute and I do appreciate each and every one of you. OK, well, thanks ever so much for stopping by and I do hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now. Wow, crocodile. And it's going to make its way down the field and we're going to begin to set it up. Hello, lad train. Hello. So again, don't put on the safety belt because I think if you are finding that, please fly safely. We have now got lots. And lots of people up on the cliff mat up here in two of the afternoon. Enjoying the food stores, the fun fair, the bouncing obstacle course. If you have brought your guide, please do fly it safely. Remember that we've got special allowance today to fly our guides quite high. But under normal circumstances, you can only fly your kite up to 200 feet or 60 meters above ground level without having to.
can't believe it. It's been that time. Hello. Are the apple polar bears over there? Look. Above the trees. Right in the distance over there. There's polar bears. Is it? <laughs> Still going. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people with this kite. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is um, this is gonna be fun. In these no. It's not one that you'll think, oh I'll just go out for a Sunday afternoon stroll and take the kite, is it? This is the modern version. So instead of being silk, uh, hand painted silk and bamboo. Um, and uh, Malcolm collected this a few years ago on his travels to Kite Festival. How long is it, Malcolm? A hundred metres long, three hundred wow. feet long. Um, you know this is an interesting spectacle when the, uh, the commentator's got his camera in his hand. Um, so this is an opportunity. Um, yeah. That's two teddy bears, a panda, and then a big panda at the bottom. Wow, well, it certainly wants to go. It's brilliant. It'll look lovely when it's flying. It certainly wants to go.
want to be quite like this, the first thing you need is at least 11 friends to help you play it. <laughs> a very understanding wife. And a lot of money. <laughs> Somebody who'll be tying off. Mm. We're nearly ready. Shall we encourage them with some music? What Benny Hill? <laughs> 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 oh, they'll let go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've lost one. <laughs> Oh, you've got a dancer. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, and the next one. Wow. 300 meters. Uh, no, 300 foot. 